Ah, good morning. Hey, before you sit down, just before you sit down, there you go. Find someone good looking around you. Find the, you've been here for a little bit. Find the best looking person. Come on over at the west side. And uh, when you find them, look right at them. Tell them this. Look right at them. Tell them this. Tell them the rest of your life. All right. That was pretty good, but I think you can do better. Look at your second choice. Look at your second choice. Let's try to get, no, don't do that. Just point to yourself. Let's try it this way. Say the rest of my life will be the best of my life. How many believe your life could get better? How many believe it? How many hope it gets better? It doesn't matter how good it's going for you right now. The rest of your life could be the best of your life. Here's the good news. It doesn't matter how bad it's going for you right now. The good news is the rest of your life will be the best of your life. Because when you put Jesus first in your life, things just keep getting better and better and better. Life goes better when you put God first. Amen. One more time before you sit down. Say the rest of my life will be the best of my life. You can be seated. I know some of you are saying, well, this guy just thinks life's perfect. He just, oh, he's just really happy up there. Well, you know, I know, I understand life's not perfect, right? I mean, even the Bible tells us that. How many believe the Bible? How many believe the Bible? Okay, about half of you. Wouldn't you hate to find out it wasn't true? That'd be horrible. You ever thought about that? Like, what if God didn't even really write all this? That's a big book. There's a lot of stuff in there. Anybody ever wondered that? Come on, be honest. It's a big, come on. Did God really write all that stuff? Let me see. You won't go to hell. Let me see your hand. You can admit it. Okay, there's a few of you. I, I've been in church my whole life. My dad's a preacher. My grandfather's a preacher. I've wondered before, I mean, did God really write all this stuff? I started thinking one day, if God didn't write it, who did? Right? You got to think, if you don't think God did it, who did it? Maybe start thinking of people you know. <laughs> Try to narrow it down. Maybe my Uncle Tony wrote it. <laughs> he don't do a whole lot. <laughs> then I found that scripture, if you don't work, you don't eat. <laughs> Uncle Tony didn't write that, I guarantee you. He's <laughs> one of the laziest people you'll ever. <laughs> Maybe my wife wrote it. Submit to your... Nope, she didn't write it. Um, how many, how many, be honest, how many, if you'd have wrote the Bible, how many could think of like three things you would not have put in there? Come on, there have been eight commandments. Here's what I do know. No human being could have ever wrote a standard this high. So if God said it, I'm just crazy enough to believe it. John 10, 10 said, he said, I've come that you might have life. And I, and I like the way it says in the Amplified Bible. I never used to read the Amplified version because I thought it was a girl Bible. But, uh, but I like, no, I did, I did because Joyce Meyer uses it all the time. So I thought it was, I thought it was for girls. But uh, then I read it and I, I like the way the Amplified does. It just, it adds a lot of extra words to describe things. Maybe that is a girl Bible. I don't know. Anyway, he is, I, I came that you might have and enjoy life. How many want to not just make it through life, but want to enjoy your life? Uh, that you might have and enjoy life, have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. That sounds like good news to me. Now, I'm not, like I said, I'm not saying life's going to be perfect. Even the Bible tells us that, right? John 16, 33, there's a promise. He said, I promise in, in the world, you will have trials. Tribulation, yes. distress, frustration. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> How many have ever had some of those trials and tribulations and distress? Yeah, we, we all go through things. Life's not, life's not perfect. How many have ever been on an airplane that hit turbulence? Let me see your hand. You ever been on, okay, quite a few of you have. What'd you do when the airplane hit turbulence? Pray. pray. Someone said, I start praying, <laughs> holding on, uh, buckling up. Did anybody get off the plane? You're like, I'm out. I can't handle this turbulence. No, you can't get off the plane. You just hold on. You, you buckle up. How, let me ask this. How many have ever been on an airplane that hit turbulence and you're still here? We made it. Yeah, it's the same thing in life. We're going to hit some turbulence in life, some trials and tribulations. Things are going to get a little bumpy sometimes. What do you do? Pray, hold on. We're going to make it. 
Life's not perfect, but I was sitting next to a lady on a plane the other day and I sat down, we talked for a few minutes and she's like, I'm really nervous. I've never flown before. And, I, and I'm like, don't worry, I'm on the plane. <laughs> it's going to be fine. So we talked for a few minutes and I can't stay awake on the plane. As soon as it takes off, I'm asleep. So I had fallen asleep and we're probably 20 minutes in and we hit some turbulence and started getting, she started hitting my leg. She goes, Hey, Hey, wake up. I'm like, huh? She's like, do something. I was like, what do you want me to do? She goes, I don't know. Aren't you like a preacher? Did you see you're a preacher? I said, I'm a, I'm a preacher. I'm not a pilot. She's like, well, do something religious. So I got up and took an offering. Uh, I thought that'd be a good thing to that's what we're doing today. Hey, how many like giving, by the way? How many like giving? In the, in this, today's an awesome day. It, it, you know, at our church, it's one of my favorite Sundays of the year when we have an opportunity to really see God's church move forward, really see lives change through our generosity. I mean, how could you not love giving when God created you to be like him? He created you in his image for God so loved the world that he, he gave. We are created to be like him. That's why most of us like giving. How many would like to be able to give more if you could? Yeah, most of us would. Our heart is, is to help others. And that's why it's funny when people tell me, ah, people don't like to give. I'm like, who? I've never met anybody who doesn't like to give. And I love to give. And most people, there's this, how many look for ways to give? I mean, I'm always looking for ways, looking for opportunities. I was at Taco Bell with my son, and, and we were sitting there, and, and, uh, uh, and the lady in the booth next to us, her and her son were talking. They were planning a birthday party that he was having, and, and, uh, and he said, Mom, I got 12 friends I want to bring to the birthday party. And his mom said, you can bring 10 friends to the birthday party. He said, but I got 12 friends. <laughs> she said, well, I can't afford enough pizza for 12 friends, I can only afford enough pizza for 10. There's this many pizzas, this many slices per pizza. And, 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 and he's, I mean, he's like nine years old, 10 years. He don't understand the equation of pizza slices. He just wants all of his friends to be at the party. And he starts getting frustrated. And then I hear the mom, she starts, she's, you don't understand. I want you to, and, and she's getting frustrated. And, and it's just really a money issue. It's not a hard issue. I mean, she'd love for him to have all of his friends. She just can't afford it. And he don't understand that. And, and I'm sitting right next to him and I'm thinking, man, here's an opportunity. And, and, uh, and I'm a Christian and, and here's someone with a need. And I'm like, what would a good Christian do if they heard about someone with a need like this? Exactly. I, I, I'm going to pray for them. <laughs> Isn't that what Christian will be praying? I hope it all works out for you. I, it amazes me how often we pray about situations that God's already given us the ability to solve. I don't have to pray, Lord, Lord, please give her wisdom to cut smaller slices with the pizza. <laughs> Lord, let one of his friends move. Um, we'd be at 11 if one's a vegan. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm thinking of ways, you know, and, and then I remembered uh, I had $100 in my pocket. And I learned this a long time ago. When God blesses you, he's got a lot more than you in mind. But he blesses you so that you can be a blessing. That's the purpose. I mean, you see it if, you, if you've been looking and praying over that Kingdom Builder magazine thing there with all of our, our projects and all the things we're going to do here at Focus Church. Uh, you'd see there it said, blessed to be a blessing. In the intro, it said, blessed to be a Say that with me. Say, I'm blessed, I'm blessed to be a blessing. Be a blessing. Yeah. If you understand that, I'm blessed to be a blessing. I'm not blessed to get a new car. I'm not blessed to get a boat. And nothing wrong with having a new car and nothing wrong with having a boat. If you have a boat, I think that's awesome. And I think we should probably be friends. Nothing wrong with having a boat, but I'm blessed to be in this building or in your building over uh, uh, at the South or wherever, which location you're at. If you're home watching online, there's pipes in your house. There's, there's water pipes. What is the purpose of a water pipe? To distribute water, right? The purpose of a water pipe in this building is to distribute water. It's not to get wet. It's to distribute water. Now, in the process of distributing water, how many know the pipe will get wet? It's not the purpose of the pipe, it's just part of the process. Same thing with being a blessing. The purpose of your blessing is not just to get blessed. The purpose of your blessing is to be a blessing. In the process of being a blessing, how many know God will bless you? How many believe the Bible? Let me see. Okay, more of you. You like that scripture. I believe that one. Uh, yeah, he blesses us. The purpose is to be a blessing. So my prayer, Lord, make me a distribution center of your blessings. 
bless me so that I can bless others. Bless me so that I can help uh, put, put uh, churches in, in the prisons. Lord, bless me so that I can help build a roof over the, uh, the, the churches that, and, that we're building in Africa. Lord, bless me so that I can be a blessing and help expand the West Campus. And bless me so that I can be a blessing and, and help uh, uh, through Path Changers and help uh, kids coming out of foster care, transition. Uh, help me. Help me be a blessing. One more time, say, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. to be a blessing. Be a blessing. I, I love that as I was reading through the magazine and all the different things that we have an opportunity to be a blessing toward. And if we really understand that I'm blessed to be a blessing, we really like to give. See, we look for ways to give. Now, the, the lady next to me, I, I remember I had that $100 and I walked over to the table. I said, excuse me, I don't mean to interrupt you. I'm not, I wasn't eavesdropping on your conversation. I, I was just listening to it. Um, <laughs> And I heard about the party. Look, here's $100. Invite those other two friends. And you guys have a blessed birthday. God bless you. And I just turned around and left. Because it wasn't about me. Right? It wasn't about me. It wasn't like, here's $100. Here's my card. Check out my YouTube channel. It's pretty good. I got great stuff on Instagram. Um, it, no, it wasn't about me. Right? By the way, you should totally check out my Instagram. Uh, it's at Dr. Dave. Mo but but it, I, just, I just left. And, uh, and I'm sure she probably got home. She's like, you not believe this. I was at Taco Bell and this big bald angel came <laughs> and I hunted with a, you're blessed to be a blessing. So I think as we look for ways to be a blessing, God gives us a chance to be a blessing. And, uh, and he puts that gift for God so loved the world that he gave. gave and he created us to be like him. That's why most of us said we like giving. Because we are created in the image of God. And he loved the world so much that he gave what? His, what? Someone said, not just his son, but his only. Think about that, his only son. You know what that tells me? He didn't have three sons. He's like, take that second one. That one, <laughs> nothing but trouble. No, no, it, he gave his only son. That tells me is he was willing to give his best. And I think about that here in a few moments as we have an opportunity to bring our best. Is it, our, is it our best or is it, well, it's just, it's something. I did something or, or am I doing my best? I mean, think of the sacrifice he made to give his only son. Are we just doing what's easy or is, is, are we sacrificing to do our very best? Here, here, here's what, I, I, I'm glad to be a part. How many love your church, by the way? How many are thankful for Focus Church? I, I'm thinking, how could you not love this church, when you have incredible leaders and pastors uh, like Pastor Mike and Ashton, how many love them and grateful for them and the vision that they have? And, uh, and just the more time I'm around, just to see how much he cares about you and loves you. And, and you know, this, this weekend really is, is people who have a heart for the house, who love their church, and we're, we're seeing all the things that we can do together. And we don't, have to, we don't have to help Teen Challenge. We don't have to help plant churches. We don't have to do that. We get to do it. We don't have to do it. But, but through your generosity, pastor says, hey, here's what we can do. And you, as you give, you put the accelerator on, and we're able to do a, a whole lot more. And I love that they have a vision to help so many other people. It's not just about us, but it's about what we can do for others. And by the way, just on behalf of, of myself and, and a lot of pastors, you, you hear pastors talk about it all over the country. Thank you. Let me just say thank you, uh, Focus Church, for not being so selfish and making your pastor be here every single Sunday. Because when he's gone and speaking somewhere else, I just want you to know your impact, focus impact is reaching beyond these walls to allow, help a lot of other people and a lot of other churches. So thank you for not being selfish. Thank you for loving him, praying for him when he's gone, praying for him when he's speaking. And I love what he's doing to help so many churches uh, to, to break barriers and reach more people. Because when we get to heaven, we get to all celebrate in that as so many more churches have grown and so many more lives have been touched because of, because of, of our faithfulness to believe for them and pray for them. Let them know how much you love them. Thank you guys for letting me hang out with you this weekend. And, um, and thank you for your heart, for what you do. Already, just through some of our financial leaders and, and, and staff and people like that, uh, have already given our goals 200,000 for this kingdom builder, and we're already over halfway there. Come on, that's awesome right there. We haven't even, we haven't even taken the offering yet, just people whose who's hearts already say, hey, I'm in. I wanna see this go forth. So, I mean, all we need is another, who, who, 
who would like to be able to say, hey, I'd, let me give that other 100000 Let's just get this taken care of. Who would like? It's not, it's not the offering. I'm just asking <laughs> who would like to be able to do that. Okay. <laughs> so we are like, is this the offering already? I thought it was. No, I'm just, I just want to see where your heart was. I mean, how many would love to be able to do that? Wouldn't that be amazing to be able, and, and, and you'll never get there. I mean, some of you may be, be able to do that, but you'll never get there until you start where you're at, right? It's like I could go in the gym and go, I'm going to bench press 500 pounds, put it on there. I'm going to hurt myself. I'm not prepared to bench press 500 pounds, but I could say put 100 on there. Let me see what I can do with that. And I start with, oh, I got that. I can do 100. See, when we give, in, in a little bit, when we fill out this card and we're, we're giving, some of us will be stretching our faith. Anytime you give beyond your tithe and offering, tithe is, is honoring God, that weekly giving that we do that, that honors God. It's the principle, and that's how we take care of the day-to-day operations and all that we do here on a week-to-week basis. But then once a year, we come together and we do our over and above giving. And that's really where our faith comes in. The, the tithe is like obedience right? I'm obeying God. And I learned about that growing up in church. I, I, I grew up in church. My dad taught us, you better pay your tithe or God will kill you. Um, <laughs> we didn't learn the joy of, 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 you know, we went to kids church. They taught us songs as kids. God will take it out of your hide if you don't pay your tithe. You know, um, to us, God was like the godfather of the mafia and tithe was like protection money. Just give God his money. He won't break your legs. You know, uh, we didn't learn the joy of giving, and so here we, we understand the joy of it and the obedience, but then above that, we have opportunities to use our faith, which is what we're going to get to do today, is to use our faith to make a bigger impact and a greater difference in, in the world, and, and so it takes faith, and how do you, faith is a muscle, faith is a muscle, how do you grow, how do you build a muscle, how do you grow a muscle? exercise it, right? Stretch it. And so, so it's like, uh, you know, I'd love to be able to give a hundred thousand, but maybe I have to start with 500 or maybe I have to start with a thousand or maybe I start. So I'm in the gym. I got, once I got a hundred down, a hundred pounds down, what, do I, what am I going to do? I'm going to add a little weight on it, right? I'm going to push it. I'm going to get up to 150. Oh man, I got 150 going. So I'm working that pretty soon. I'm going to add a little weight on it. 200, 200. Now I'm not going to say, well, 200 is good. I think I'll just do this forever. I'll just stay right here at 200. No, at some point, if I want my muscle to keep growing, I got to keep stretching it. So I'll go up to 250. One day I'll get to 500, but right now I'm just working my way up. I'm not to 500 yet. All right, right now I bench press right around 3.30 or 4 o'clock. Usually about that time in the <laughs> afternoon is when I do it. But I, I got to keep working my way up there. And it's the same thing with my, with my giving. I remember different area, different times when I stretched. But every time I raised the standard of my living, God raised the standard of my giving. Every time I raised the standard of my giving, God raised the standard of my living. See, there's this cycle. We just came through Thanksgiving. And, uh, and I, I kind of look at this thanks and giving as a cycle. God blesses us. Thank you, God. You're such a good God. I want to give back because you've blessed me so much. And so I give back. When I give, God blesses me. As he blesses me, I become thankful. As I'm thankful, I give. And I get in this cycle of thanks and giving, thanks and giving. I think that's the cycle that God wants us to be in. And so as we understand that, what, here's what the Bible says. If for those half of you that believe the Bible, I'm going to show you a couple things in here. Um, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24 says this, the word of the generous gets larger and larger. How many want God to bless your life? Yeah. So be generous. The word of the generous gets larger and larger because if you're stingy, it it tells you what's going to happen. The word of the stingy will get smaller and smaller. Now here's what's real simple. The one who blesses others, that's us today. We're going to bless others. We're going to bless uh, children that are coming out of foster care. We're going to, we're going to bless uh, people that are behind bars. We're going to, we're going to bless churches that are being planted and, and people that God's put on the heart. So the one who blesses others, it says, is abundantly blessed. So you want to know how to get abundantly blessed? Well, it's real simple. Bless others. So we're going to give you a chance to get blessed today. And those who help others are helped. I mean, we want God to get involved and help you when you need it right? And, and so um, the, the more you give, it says the more you, the more you have. So it links this, this well-being, financial well-being with being a giver, with being a blessing to other people. So I want to talk to you about that just for a minute. 
I'm going to share one of my favorite scriptures and just tell you a little bit of my story of where I was, what God said to me, and, and where I am today. 20, um, 20 something years ago, Pastor, 17 years. Congratulations. That's awesome. My wife and I have been happily married for 17 years also. And uh, um, we just had our 25th wedding anniversary. But. Uh, um, <laughs> Is our, our anniversary it was a few months ago. She goes, hey, honey, we woke up that morning. She goes, honey, today is our anniversary. I said, I know. She said, I had a dream last night that you were going to give me a diamond necklace. She said, what do you think that means? I said, when we go to dinner tonight, you're going to find out what it means. She was so excited. We went to dinner and I gave her a gift. She was ripping the paper off that thing. And, and I bought her this book on the meaning of dreams. Um, I mean, I had no idea. I had no idea what it meant, but one of my favorite scriptures, let me show you one of my favorite scriptures on, on giving it's in uh, second Corinthians, second uh, Corinthians chapter eight. And, and, and it says, they're gonna put it up on the screen so you can see it. Now, brothers and sisters, we want to tell you about the grace of God, which has been evident in the churches of, um, uh, of Raleigh, <laughs> Focustonia, that's you, Focustonians, awakening in them a longing to contribute. Something's happening. God's moving in our church, and it's making people want to give. It's making people want to make a difference because during an ordeal of severe distress, some people are going through some, some distress, yet they're abundant. How can you be happy in the middle of distress? Well, what does it say? John 16, 33, in the world you have trials, tribulations, desert, but be of good cheer. What? You want me to be happy? You want me to have abundant joy in the middle of my stress? Yeah, you can do that. And their depth of poverty. Oh, you mean they were going through something. Both those together, they're distressed. They're having some financial issues. Yet all that together brought this joy that overflowed into a wealth of lavish generosity. Amen. You mean they gave when they were going through some stuff themselves? That's what the Bible says. You know what's amazing to me? I think about that, their, their depth of poverty. I grew up in a, in a, in a state called Mississippi. Now, Mississippi, if you look at the list of the 50 states, usually when it, it, it gives you the, the, uh, the income ratio, the income, Mississippi, we're usually down at the bottom. We're one of the lowest income states, usually 48, 49. We usually only hit 50, thank God, for Arkansas. But um, <laughs> just kidding. Um, but when you come to generosity, Mississippi's always in like the top 10 when it comes to the percentage. So one of the poorest states, but one of the most generous states. You look at some of the wealthy states up in New England area, and they are some of the least amount when it comes to generosity. So it's not the amount that you have that makes you generous. It's the heart that you have that makes you generous. So you say, well, I don't have, enough. I can't give $10,000, but you can do something. You can do something. You can do your best. That's what God did for you. Verse 3, for I testify that according to their ability and beyond their ability, they gave voluntarily, begging us insistently for the privilege of participating in the service and the support of the saints in Jerusalem. So they're begging. People are saying, please, Pastor, let us help you. Let us help you help Teen Challenge. Lord, Lord, Pastor, please, can we help put those, a roof on that church in Africa. Can, can, we, can we be a part of, of, of all this? That's what they're doing. They're begging for the chance to help. Not only did they give materially, they gave their finances and that, but uh, the, we had hoped that they would do, but they also gave themselves. They gave themselves to the Lord. And I found this, when you give your heart to God, it's easy to give him anything else he asks for. When he has your heart, what was, the, what was the Bible say? Where your heart is, your treasure. Where your treasure is, your heart is. It's easy to give when you love something. And so when you love the church, it's easy to give to the church. And so they, they love, they gave themselves to the Lord. And when you give yourself to the Lord, it's easy to give your marriage to the Lord. It's easy to give your business to the Lord. It's easy to give your finances to the Lord. By the will of God, oh, look at this last part. They, I wish they had kind of left this off, but it, it says, they disregarded their personal interest and gave as much as they possibly could. 
I thought, what in the world does that mean? Disregarding their personal interests. It's like one time I remember saving some money up to take my family on a cruise. And I'd saved that money up and, uh, and, and, I, and God asked me to give something. I said, I don't have that. He said, what do you mean you don't have it? I said, I don't have that money. He said, well, you got that cruise money. I'm like, that's right. That's my cruise money. You can go with me. But, uh, and, 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 the, and I, I ended up giving that money. I disregarded my, my personal interest was to go on this cruise. But I, I, he had me disregard my personal interest, and, uh, and, and he made it up to me. Trust me, I, I'll, I'll tell you about it if I have a chance. But let, let, me, let me show you this. So just as we see here in the, in, in the lives of these early Christians in Macedonia, giving moved them personally, and it moved them corporately. And so I believe that today and through this moment of generosity that we have together today, it's not just going to move us personally of what God's going to speak to you to do. And some of you had this amount you already thought that you were going to do, but God, God has something different for you to do. And some of you already said, hey, here's what I'm going to do. And, and God's been stretching you a little bit and you're trying to fight against it. But, but when we give personally and corporately together, I believe we'll be able to, to, to knock out the rest of that and, and give more than was even expected and help more people than we, than we even imagined. And we all, God speaks to our heart about different things, right? And so today, I want to look at three things. I'm going to give you three things real quick. Just write these. If you're taking notes, write these three things down. Put them in your phone. Three, the three things I see about giving here in this scripture. If you're not taking notes today, um, just go ahead and write these down and uh, put them in your phone. Uh, I think it will help you later. So the first thing I, I noticed, and they're all C's, so I'm going to make it real simple for you. Uh, they're all C's. I like to make things simple to remember them. Like I like to use acronyms. It always helps you remember stuff or, or all C's. Like this, 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 these two old guys were talking one day, and uh, the guy said, hey, my, my anniversary's Friday. Uh, you got any thoughts where I could take my wife to dinner? He goes, oh, man. He said, I do have a place. Um, my wife and I went there a couple weeks ago. It was amazing. He said, oh, man, that sounds good. He goes, oh, it's very romantic. He goes, that's what I need for my anniversary. He said, and the service was impeccable. He goes, I never, the service there, I've never seen anything like it. And the food, he goes, you, you sold me. I want to go. Where, where, what, what's it called? He said, um, that's the problem. I can't remember. He said, what do you mean you can't? You just described it perfectly. He goes, I can remember what it was like. It would be perfect for your anniversary. I just can't remember what it's called. He said, you got to remember. He said, wait a minute. I think, uh, what's that flower with the, the red, the red flower with the long stem on Valentine's? With the, the, he goes, a rose? He said, that's it. Hold on. Hey, Rose, what's the name of that restaurant we went to? Okay. This is just to help you remember. Okay, the first letter C. First letter C. Giving is a celebration. Today shouldn't be like, oh, we got to give today. No, it's a, we, get to, right. we get to celebrate today. Out of their abundant joy came a wealth of lavish generosity. The first thing I saw there is they gave joyfully. And the Bible says God loves a cheerful. I just feel like Joel Osteen right there for a minute. A cheerful giver. Amen. <laughs> um, the other day, someone introduced me. They said, what's Dave Martin like? And someone said, he's kind of a mixture between Joel Osteen and Larry the Cable Guy. <laughs> Just hold your Bible up with me and say, get her done. You know, I don't know. So, so here, here's what I found here in this scripture in 2 Corinthians 9, that the grace of God was directly connected with their giving. This grace was on them, even in the depth of their poverty and all that they were going through. The Bible in 2 Corinthians says, God loves a cheerful giver and God is able to make all grace abound to you. That you having all sufficiency in everything would have an abundance to give to every good work. So when we fail to see giving as a grace, it becomes a burden to give instead of a blessing to give. We, we like to talk about grace living, but what about grace giving? That God will grace you to be able to give to every opportunity. Today, we got an opportunity. God wants to grace you. And it says they gave willingly. We don't have to do any of this. We get to do all of it, right? We don't have to give. We, we get to give. It, they, it says they saw a need and they responded voluntarily. They weren't forced into it. We didn't get big ushers 
today. Bigger ushers than normal. Come on. You can do better. No. No, it's a voluntary. Every one of us get to, get to don't have to. And, and it says, lastly, that they gave eagerly. I love that. So we see that, that in the scripture that their joyful, willing, eager giving became a celebration. And then the next see there that they're giving, it, I think they're giving just like our giving should, was, it was compelling. It was a compelling force in their life. If we, in giving, we grow. So by giving, we become part of something bigger together than we could ever do by ourselves. It, it's like the, 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 um, the God behind bars. So our goal is $10,000 to help start these churches in, in prisons behind bars. I, I, now, Africa, we can help build a roof on a church in Africa. You may never go to Africa, but your giving is going to make it possible for you to go make a difference in Africa. You may never go behind bars, and, and we hope you don't. I hope I don't, but I don't mind helping start some churches. Now, maybe we, we, I wrote a book a few years ago, and every time someone buys one, we give one to an inmate. It's called Another Shot. Because everyone gets another chance. God's not done with you on one mess up. And, and so um, maybe, maybe, you've, maybe you've been there. Maybe you have a, a relative or a family member or a friend who, who's behind bars, incarcerated. And you say, man, that speaks to my heart. But maybe you say, I can't give 10000 but you can give 1000 And someone else, God speaks to you to give 500 And someone else, God speaks to you to give 2500 And pretty soon, all those come together. And together, as we grow together, we can do much more together than we can by ourselves. And so as all of us do, God didn't require anybody to do everything, but he's requiring all of us to do something today. Every one of us can do something today. A, a, a seed of nothing will produce a season of nothing. There's not a day in our life we make it with nothing. So God says, every time I give you an opportunity, our giving will make an incredible impact. Uh, here's what I have learned about giving. You only get to keep what you give. Think, think about that. At, at the end of your life, what will last? Only what you've given, only what you've invested, only the love that you've given, uh, the kingdom work that you've done. When you do that, it says you make an investment into the bank of heaven. If you were here last Sunday, pastor taught a, a, an incredible message. And if you missed it, you can go watch it on YouTube. But he, he talked about EROI. What's your, what's your ROI? What's your return on investment? But when we invest today, we're going to get an EROI. We're going to get an eternal reward or return on our investment. What we're going to do today will we'll echo throughout eternity of the lives that will be changed. So our giving compels us to be bigger than ourselves because together we can make a difference. It says that they gave supernaturally. They gave beyond their ability is what it said. God's spirit makes it possible for you to give beyond your natural ability. I, I think about that. It says they gave unexpectedly, not what we expected can you imagine Pastor Mike and Ash? And and man, it was not what it's not what we expected. Paul was kind of uh, reluctant to even encourage everyone to give because he knew the things that they were going through. But he's like, man, we can make a difference. And so they all gave, and, and it was he was like, it was more than I even expected to give. I remember uh, our church was doing a, an offering kind of like this years ago. My wife and I just got married, and we lived in a little government assisted apartment. You know, um, Section Eight. Housing is what they call it. And, and uh, we didn't have a bed, had a little air mattress. And our pastor is encouraging everyone, here's the things we can do and, and the difference we can make. And I'm thinking, I, wow, I, I don't think we could do anything. We don't, we don't have hardly anything. And, and, uh, and he said, there's some people here that could give $10,000. And, and there, there, there's some people who have. And there's some people here that could give uh, uh, $100. He goes, but there's a few people God's speaking to right now about $500. And he said that. And all of a sudden, I felt like God said, that's you. Give $500. I said, oh, shoot. <laughs> I started to reach for my wallet. About the time I did, the guy sitting next to me goes, I'm one of them. I said, whew. <laughs> I guess I overheard God talking to him. <laughs> so I put my wallet back in my pocket. My wife leaned over. She said, is God telling you anything? I said, I don't know. Is he telling you anything? She said, I think we're supposed to give 500. Oh. Shoot. I remember I looked in my checkbook. I had $503 in my account. When you have $503 and God wants 500 of it, 
you want to make sure he knows what he's doing. I remember I kind of, I kind of leaned my checkbook up toward heaven so he could see how much I had. He said, I already knew how much I had. That's why I didn't ask for more. So I started writing the envelope. Ink was smearing from the tears. God loves a cheerful giver. He also loves uncheerful givers, actually. He loves, he loves everybody. I would tell you this. If you're happy every time you give, you probably don't give a lot. There's a lot of times I haven't been happy. That was one of them. When you have 500, he wants, he, he have 503 and he wants 500 of it. Willing? Yes, I was willing. Obedient? Fine. I was obedient. Happy? Nope. Uh-uh, I was crying. People were like, you shouldn't cry when you give to God. I said, I'm not. I'm just watering my seed. I said, I water my seed. I see it a little bit there, but, but here's what I learned that day when God spoke to me about that $500 and, and you'll, you'll learn this too. And, and, as, and, and that's why I think it's so important today that you hear God's voice. Well, the most important thing you can do is know what God's telling you to do, because when God speaks to you about a seed, he's got a harvest on his mind. See, God's already thinking right now of how he wants to bless you, but nothing leaves heaven until something leaves earth. When you let go of what's in your hand, God lets go of what's in his hand. And that day when he spoke to me about the $500, he knew what was on the other side. I didn't know what was on the other side, but my wife went to Walmart, get some Walmart stuff. While she's in there, a lady comes up to her with a video camera, says, hey, we got people at 20 Walmarts today looking for two friends to be in a Walmart commercial. Would you and your friend like to audition? I said, sure, what do we got to do? They go, just shop, we'll videotape you. We're going to send it and, and uh, they'll pick two people. So they came home, told me about it, and I laughed. You know, you don't go to Walmart. People ask you to be in commercials. I've been to Walmart. No one's ever asked me nothing. I quit laughing the next day when we got a telephone call. Out of all the Walmarts, her and her friend were chosen for this Walmart commercial. They said, can you come back to Walmart Friday morning at 8 o'clock? They go back there. There's lights. There's cameras everywhere. They filmed this commercial. At the end of the day, they thanked them for coming and gave them each a check for $800. So first of all, my wife never went shopping, came home with more money than she left with. <laughs> so I knew God was into this somehow. But... Um, this was just two weeks after God spoke to us about the $500. Now here she is at Walmart. By the way, it was a national commercial, which means every time it aired, she got paid for it. It aired for 13 weeks. By the end of the first two weeks, we'd already received checks in the mail for over $5,000. By the end of the 13 weeks, over $15,000. I'm telling you, you just never know how God's going to bless you. Now we're ha we, were, we were in that little apartment. We were $32,000 in debt. We just paid off half our debt. I had no idea how we'd ever be able to pay off debt. And God supernaturally, when God spoke to us about the 500, he already knew about the Walmart commercial. But when I let go of what was in my hand, God let go of what was in his hand. You never know. Next time you, I, next time you go to Walmart, <laughs> you'll fix your hair, do your makeup. You just... Every time I walk by the security cameras, I'm like, you just never know. You just never know. But we didn't stop there. I didn't stop with 100 pounds. I'm not just going to keep benching 100 pounds forever. I got to stretch my faith. And, and the next year, God spoke to us to double it and give 1,000. The next year, uh, we gave 2,500. And, and over time, we began to stretch. I remember that 2,500 too. We were in service uh, that day. We were going to take the offering. That day. I'm in, I had them out in my mind I was going to do. And I'm just enjoying praise and worship. They're singing like you guys got some awesome praise and worship here at Focus Church. And, and just anointed. And I'm just worshiping. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit says, you know that money you're saving for your car? I'm like, turn that music up. I'm going to try to drown that out. And, uh, and my wife leaned over, she says, God telling you anything? I said, the car money? She said, yeah, I've been saving that $2,500 for, we needed another car. God said, give it. I gave it that day in the offering. A couple days later, I'm in the car with the guy. He said, I'm thinking about getting a new car. I said, so, so was I. Yeah. He said, you should buy this car. I said, well, I'm not really in a position to buy. He goes, I'm not, listen, I'm not in a hurry. Just pray about it. You and your wife pray about it. And I said, okay, that's fine. So I went home and told my wife. She goes, I love that car. I'm like, all right. She goes, let's pray about it. I'm like, yeah, fine. Yeah, pray if you want to. <laughs> I was, I, actually, I was still a little upset about giving all my money in the offering. And, and, uh, and all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit said, that's your car. Call them and tell them you want it. 
I said, I would, but you got all my money. Um, he, he said, look, call the, I called the guy. He said, I, we're not in a hurry. I said, my wife and I were praying last night. You said you weren't in a hurry. If you'd give us a little bit of time, we'd like to get some money together. We'd like to buy that car from you. He said, you know what? He said, my wife and I were praying last night, and we, we, we felt like God said, if you called and wanted the car, that we were just supposed to give it to you. He said, I don't know if, if you have plans tonight, but we'd like to bring the keys and the title over to your house. And I, I said, I, actually, our plans just changed. Um, <laughs> but here's the thing. I could have kept that money and made a down payment on a car. I could be making payments on a car today. But when God spoke to me about a seed, he had a harvest on his mind. And so I've learned to obey his voice. Every time an opportunity like this comes, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do this year? Not what do you want my neighbor to do? Not what do you want someone else to do? What do you have for me to do this year? And I found that every time we've stretched our faith, stretched our faith to, to 10,000. I remember one time our church was building a youth center. It's going to be $3 million. They wanted to build it cash. We're sitting there, pastor, sharing the vision. My wife leans over and says, I think God wants us to give 25,000 to the youth center. And I said, um, I don't feel that. I felt like giving 10,000 to the youth center because I had an extra 10,000. So I never even dreamed. I grew up a poor kid in Mississippi. I mean, we were so poor. My dad told us if the ice cream truck was playing music, that meant they were out, you know? I mean, we'd go to, we'd go to KFC, lick other people's fingers, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, and God said, would you give 25,000 to the youth center? I said, God, I don't have 25,000. He said, I didn't ask you if you had it. He said, I asked you if you would give it. I said, well, if I had it, I'd give it. He said, okay. You know, there's a scripture that says he will supply seed to the sower. How many, how many of you in here over at, at West Campus, South Campus, how many of you, if you had, um, if you had an extra thousand dollars? above what you needed to survive and pay your bills. If you, you had an extra thousand dollars, you believe in our church, you love our church, you love what God's doing through Focus, you love all these things that we're doing through Kingdom Builder. You said, if I had an extra thousand, I would give it easy to see the, the church move forward. Let me see your hand. If, if you had it, yeah, most of us would. I mean, look at that. That extra hundred thousand could be taken up here, just not even in our other campuses or online, just that quickly. And I know not everybody has it. Some of you do. Some of you lifted your hand and you have it. You know where it is. Others of you, God's blessed you and you can do much more than that. So it's not, again, that we'll all do the same. But if we all do our very best, because the last C there, finally our giving demonstrates our commitment. It demonstrates our commitment. Their, their, their commitment is what caused these believers to be compelled to give and to do it with celebration, a celebration, uh, a compelled, a commitment. They gave sacrificially. They gave sacrificially and they gave personally. And that's what I, I just urge you to do today. Pastor's going to come in just a moment. I'm going to pray a prayer for you, but he's going to come and, 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 I'm gonna, and he's, I encourage you to give today, not out of a sense of, of duty, but out of a desire to please the one who gave himself for you. They gave his very best for you. And I think when that happens, my goodness, what we'll be able to do will just be, uh, just be incredible as all the different ministries. So I challenge you, just make willful, generous giving a habit in your life. And if you do, we'll be like these Macedonians. We'll be the Focustonians, the believers who, who those, had those three C's. They give with celebration as our own commitment causes us to be compelled to live out our faith. And when we do that, when each of us do that, the vision of the house will be accomplished. All those goals of kingdom builders will be reached and even beyond that. All that we need for the other campuses and for our campus, we're gonna be, all that will be done as we each take this heart, our heart for the house, and say, God, use us to make a difference. Father, I thank you uh, today as, as pastor comes and gives us an opportunity, we fill out this card and, and, and you speak to our hearts. Lord, you're already speaking to our hearts. It's a business person you're, you're speaking to right now. They already had an amount that they even said that they were gonna do. And Lord, you just told them that was, that was an easy amount. When you spoke to me to give the 25,000, all I had was 10, I gave it immediately. 
And you reminded me, that's when you reminded me about the cruise money. And, and, and then all of a sudden, this little extra money came that I wasn't expecting. And within just a few days, 90 days, probably, I, had, I was able to give the whole $25,000. Lord, someone you're speaking to today, there's many that can do that thousand. That's easy. There's a young person that you're speaking to, about 200. 200 is a huge stretch for them. They're like, I don't even know what I'm going to do if I give all this But Lord, as we're obedient to your voice, every one of us will fill this out and every one of us will do something at some level of our faith. And we're gonna give, we're gonna give and we know that you'll bless us. But Lord, we're not giving just for the blessing, we're giving to be a blessing. Lord, make us distribution centers of your blessing. And as we do, as we give, as you've given to us, maybe you're here today and You say, I've never even given my heart to Jesus. I tell you what, life goes better when you put God first. And if you're here today and you've never said yes to Jesus, if you're watching online, if you're at one of our other locations, you never said yes to Jesus, this is easy. You know if that's you. All you have to do is believe in your heart, say with your mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord. I want everyone, actually everyone listen to me right now. Say these words. Say, Jesus Christ is my Lord. Today, people said yes to Jesus because of the vision of Focus Church and the vision that God gave a couple 11 years ago that we get to be a part of continuing to move forward. Father, I thank you for those that said yes today, who gave their heart. When we've given our heart to you, it's easy to give anything else you ask us. So Father, today I thank you that each one of us would obey your voice and together we'll celebrate the difference that we've made around the world, across our city, and in lives every day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.